session four. Excited to have you. Um, as you can see, this is the first time I've ever filmed at night, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, love having your comments, and I just wanted to make a comment on someone else's comment. From Kayla and Alexis from Kentucky. I really liked their comment on how they were learning how the whole Bible ties together. And that cross-referencing is so important because sometimes we view like the book of Ruth as just a story inside of a bigger book. And it is in a sense, but actually the Bible is one complete story. And so everything we see even in the book of Ruth is a type and a shadow of something to come, which is the Messiah, Jesus, and our Redeemer. And so it's really neat to cross-reference like we are and kind of get a complete picture of, okay, this is a kinsman Redeemer, and this is why this is important, and this is a background of this era or whatever. And so um, that's why we like to do a lot of cross-referencing cross so you understand that Ruth is just one small part of a bigger story. And it's fabulous. That's what the Bible is about. So um, thanks, Kayla and Alexis, for commenting on that. And so glad to have you. We are going to start with Ruth 2, 11 and 12. I really have just been in awe of, when I look at Ruth's life, her character stands out. We see that that people noticed her character so much so and of course she was already a foreigner and all these things but she stood out from the rest of everyone because of her character her extreme love and so i love what boaz says in um ruth 2 11 and 12 boaz answered her everything you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death has been fully reported to me how you left your father and mother in the land of your birth and how you came to a people you didn't previously know. May the Lord reward you for what you have done and may you receive a full reward from the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come to refuge. Um, in my Bible, there's a ton of cross-referencing right under there because that that imagery that he uses under the refuge of God's wings is all over, especially in the Psalms. And so he was using, kind of in a way, saying she's being engrafted in because she's a foreigner and she's coming in to this land where everybody's kind of been born an Israelite. And he's kind of giving her, in a way, a... Um, ticket to being engrafted in and so that's really uh encouraging really encouraging but her character is what made her um get special treatment in a way because she wasn't complaining she wasn't doing the things that would be normal bitterness and walking away and doing her own thing but instead she was faithful and she uh, was a friend, and she was loving, and showing this tremendous amount of kindness to her mother-in-law. And so then, this is what, I mean, it was obviously a place where news traveled fast. And so Boaz had heard about this, and about this is this woman, and, and he blessed her. In Israel, that's a huge thing, he, he spoke a blessing over her. And I just uh, am encouraged by that. But really where I want to go this week, just real quick, is Ruth 2.14. It says, At mealtime, Boaz told her, Come over here and have some bread and dip it in the vinegar sauce. So she sat beside the harvesters and he offered her roasted grain. She ate and was satisfied and had some left over. Now some of us would look at that verse and be like, Big deal. But inviting her to his table was huge. Again, going back to the fact that she's a foreigner, um, she grew up worshiping a totally different God, or gods, um, pluralistic. And so 
by him inviting her to the table, this was huge. I mean, it wasn't even like some of his servants wouldn't have been eating at his table. And she was eating his food. And this is another provision, protection thing that he was offering to her. And tables are very symbolic in scripture. Uh, in fact, I looked it up. And from what I can tell, the first mention of a table in scripture is in Exodus 25:23, And it's actually where God was giving instructions to the land of, or to the people of Israel about the, the temple and the shoe bread table. And he actually gives them specifics because, of course, back then they would have been used to sitting on the ground and eating their food there. They didn't really do tables until the temple. And so God is actually the one that instituted the table in Israel. And the table is so powerful. I've seen it even in my own life. When I eat around a table with people, uh, it changes our relationship in a good way because it's, it's a covenant, it's a communion that any other place can't really hold a candle to. And uh, I would just wonder about maybe some times that you can think of sitting around a table and eating with somebody and how that's um, played in your life uh, an important role. Maybe certain places that you've been invited to eat at a table and what that means, what that feels like, uh, especially in a society when we don't really sit at a table very much anymore. Most families don't. And uh, so I see this table, this imagery of him inviting Ruth to his table. It's huge. Um, I can remember a couple times was when I was younger where tables played a huge um, importance in my mind and memories that I have around a table, not just with my family, but also with extended family or adopted family. Um, I remember one time my grandma had a tea party with me and we, her house is kind of small and she wanted to make it special and different. And so she actually put a card table up in her basement and her basement's not finished or anything. But to me, you know, I was allowed to get dressed up and we had all this fancy tablecloth and, and, um, food and it was like being at a castle for me because even though it was just a card table there was something almost magical that happened sitting at that table and being able to pretend like I was a princess with my granny and that was very important to me and that's a memory that's just always going to be in my mind. Um, as I got older I had a, an adopted aunt that did a special, she was from England and so she did a special tea party with like all the real silver and uh, linen tablecloth and I don't even remember all the details because there were so many little details but I remember thinking wow this is amazing and just sitting at the table with these other girls and moms and what an impression that made on me because we were eating together and just the hospitality and those things that aren't always normal in our day um, and so those were sometimes, uh, but also just even normal things, even eating pizza around a table with friends, that can be so powerful because you are connecting in a different way when there's food and there's a table and there's friends. Something happens that God has just designed for us to connect differently around a table. Um, but I love the imagery again because really, as we look at the story of Boaz and Ruth, Boaz is the picture of Jesus as a redeemer. And we'll kind of touch on a little bit on that later, but Jesus invites us, God invites us to his table. And the marriage supper of the Lamb is a time where we will be at a feast, as a marriage feast. Um, for Christ and his church, his bride, the church, and we're invited to that. And so this 
um, this imagery is so, it's so parallel because here Ruth is not the picture perfect person. She has a past. She has a, um, a different God that she used to worship. She doesn't look the same. She's not of the same country. Um, so in a lot of senses, she's not what Boaz would have picked uh, normally. And yet he still offers to her his table. And we are the same way. We have sinned and fallen very short of what it takes to get to heaven. But God in his mercy still invites us. He says, I pay the price for you on the cross. And so I'm inviting you. All you have to do is receive this invitation and come to my table. And this is a, a beautiful picture um, here, in, here in Ruth, but also in Revelation when he says, come, come and eat with me, come and dine with me. This is your table now because I have, I have offered this and I have paid for you and now you can come and sit at my table. Um, Revelations 22 is so amazing because it talks about that marriage supper of the Lamb, about God and his amazing abilities. Revelations 22, 12 through 17, Jesus says, Look, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside, outsiders, outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexual immoralities, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Both the spirit and the bride say, come. Anyone who hears should say, come. And the one who is thirsty should come. Whoever desires should take the living water as a gift. And so here we see it doesn't matter what we've done and what we used to be, but Christ offers us. He's paid our debt on the cross. And so because of that, he offers us the ability to come and sit at his table. And this is amazing. I mean, this is a gift that we could never, ever, ever repay. But this is, um, this is something I just, uh, God has put on my heart the last couple of days as I'm studying for this session, how important the table is. And not just the, t the physical table, <laughs> but also the spiritual table. And we have the awesome opportunity to invite our friends to the table of the Lord. Obviously, he's the one that's calling them. His spirit is calling them. But we ha we're messengers. So we're able to say, come, come with me to the table of the Lord. And this, this is our food. This is our daily sustenance. And he feeds us with this. So this is for you. And each day, it's so important that we get in it and we feed ourselves, our spirit man, like we've talked about before, with the word of God. My challenge to you um, personally is come to the table often. Uh, we, we know that the marriage supper with the lamb is at the end of time, uh, but also this word is for you to come to the table and eat and drink of him. I actually have two challenges, and my second challenge is to invite others to the table of the Lord. This might be through witnessing to a friend, or it may be through just encouraging someone to come to the table of the word. And we all have times in our lives when we need someone to encourage us to get in the word daily and to really make that a discipline to strengthen our spirit man. And so my challenge is twofold. First, come to the table yourself often. 
and then second, encourage your friends to do that same thing, to come to the table. And I am so grateful that you've chosen to keep on with this study. We're at the halfway mark, so I will um, continually pray for you and, and encourage keep those comments coming, those questions, those um, things that you're learning through the Word. I'm really enjoying it, so I'll see you next week.